Hello! Today we're going to work on creating color wheels. So what is a color wheel? A color wheel is a circle diagram that illustrates the relationship between different colors. So how do you create a color wheel? A color wheel can be created by many different art techniques and materials. This video is to provide some instructions and ideas for what you can do to complete the color wheel assignment for class. I will demonstrate how to create a digital color wheel in PowerPoint along with sharing ideas for more traditional supplies like paint, color pencils, and markers. Let's begin our demonstration. <clears throat> Step 1. Brainstorm what type of images you want to use for your digital color wheel. For example, I will be using chairs for my example color wheel demonstrated in this video. Step 2. Look up pictures using Google Images and save them in a folder on your computer. There are a couple of details you want to look for with your images. A plain background, you will eventually remove the background of your picture, so having a plain background makes the process of removing the background very easy. Saving your pictures as a JPEG or PNG type file. If you are unable to save the file as either type while in Google Images, use your snipping tool to capture the image, then save the picture. Let's demonstrate how to do that. So here I am, I'm in Google Images, and you can see I've already done a search for a red chair. I want to find an orange chair, so I'm going to type in orange chair. And here I get all these different examples. I want to make sure that I am picking a genuine orange chair. So look through the examples that are provided for you. And this chair right here <clears throat> looks like it's a pretty good orange color. So I'm going to come and click on that image. I'm going to right click and I am going to save image as. It comes up as a JPEG image, so I'm just simply going to change one thing. I'm going to add the word orange to here so I know what color it is. And I'm going to save my file. So you're going to want to go through and save images of objects for all the colors in the color wheel. If you want to, you can keep a checklist and you can cross things out as you have saved them, like I'm doing here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the online program Remove Background. So let's demonstrate that next. So if I open a new tab and I type in remove.bg and hit the enter key, it takes me straight to the website. And I want to upload an image. Now you can see I have already uploaded a red chair here. So I'm going to go through and look for my orange chair. Here it is. I'm going to open it. <clears throat> it will upload. And now I'm going to download, now that I see the background's been removed, that is this gray and white checkerboard pattern, shows me that the background has been removed. And I'm going to save my orange wool fabric egg chair with the removed background. Next, I'm going to set up my color wheel. Now, there is a template page in the Unit 2 template that has the basic layout for the color wheel. That is perfectly fine to use, but if you want to draw your own, then here's a quick demonstration of those tools. I like to start off drawing a nice large circle and I do not want my circle to be blue so I'm going to click on shape fill and I'm going to go down to no fill. I can change my outline if I want to 
and I'm going to change it to the color black. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to add two isosceles triangles into my circle. We have two major groups of colors that we use in color wheels, and those would be the primary and the secondary colors. We also use the intermediate colors. We'll talk about that in just a couple of moments, but I'm going to draw these triangles so, I, so that they will help me space out my colors. I'm going to do no fill on this triangle, and I want to do the black outline. Now I want another triangle identical to this, so I select my triangle. I'm going to use my Control and my C key to copy it. If you want to, you can also use the right click key. Sometimes it does it correctly the first time. You can copy using right click. I prefer using my control keys. To paste, I'm going to hold my control key down again and tap on the V key and it gives me a second triangle. Now I'm going to rotate this triangle so it looks upside down to my first triangle that I drew. I'm going to slide it over. And remember, all I'm doing is using these for spacing. This time I'm going to change my outline to a dashed line. And the reason I do that is my solid line is going to be for my primary colors. Those are red, blue, and yellow. And the dotted line is going to be for my secondary colors. And those colors are green, orange, and violet. And really quickly, I am going to show you on this color wheel that the colors have a natural progression. I start with yellow on the top. That's kind of the way I was trained, but honestly, you can have any of these colors on top as long as they are going in the correct order. So yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red, red, violet, violet, blue, violet, blue, blue, green, green, yellow, green, and then right back to yellow. Step five is beginning to add your images to your color wheel. So here is my color wheel template. And one of my suggestions that you do is if you're using the one provided in the template, you move these color labels to the side. I try to keep them in order. That way I have a guide to put my colors around. And then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start adding our images. Now I've added in yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. So my next color in my list is red, orange. So I'm going to go to the insert and I'm going to choose pictures from this device. And then I'm going to find my red orange chair without the background, click on it, and insert it. And I'm going to slide it over. Now I need to reduce the size of my image, so I'm going to grab the corner and I'm going to reduce the size of my chair. And then I'm going to move on my next color in my color wheel. is red. So I'm going to go and insert my red chair without the background. And I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to resize it. And I'm going to keep adding my images. Here is my completed color wheel. You'll notice that I've gone and I've moved those labels so that they're next to the appropriate chair. And this is what I'm going to also just remind you. There are color that we primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. Secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. And our tertiary or intermediate colors, those are a combination of the primary and secondary colors mixed together. Now you can leave your color wheel this way, 
or you can change your color wheel up. In this case, I went and took my images and I would copy it, control copy, and then control paste, and I reduced the size slightly, and I'm just overlapping them and creating more of that like wheel shape. In fact, the chairs kind of mimic the spokes in like a bicycle wheel. But if you don't want to do furniture, if you just want to do a whole bunch of pictures of different colored objects, here's another example. This was a student example that was done last year in interior design. And same process, removing the background and then layering the images in. Now, there are some other ideas if you do not want to do a digital color wheel. For example, if you have a lot of different colored objects around your home, you can gather up all of those objects from the different colors of the color wheel and create a physical color wheel and then photograph it. You can also use art supplies. So if you choose this option, make sure you take a selfie holding your color wheel so that we can see that you actually made it yourself. This was simply made out of a coffee filter and Dollar Tree watercolors and with a black gel pen, all of the colors were labeled. This one's a little more creative. I used a ruler and divided up my page. I added the watercolors in first, same Dollar Tree watercolors, and then I took a black Sharpie permanent marker and drew on top of it because I wanted something a little more visually interesting to look at. And then on this one, notice I just move the colors around the colors of my color wheel. These are some additional ideas. The picture in the upper left hand color, uh, corner is pictures cut out of magazines to create a color wheel. You could also use things like scrapbooking paper. This one was done in marker and um, watercolors. And this one right here was done using colored pencils. And this one down in the lower left hand color, someone took paint and painted different pieces of paper and then cut out the leaf shape and arranged the colors in a color wheel. Can you use your own ideas to create a color wheel? Absolutely. Share your ideas with me and chances are I will approve your choice. So finally, it's time for you to now go and create. Thank you for watching.